In this video, we are going to learn about multidimensional arrays. Let us first see how declaration will be done for multidimensional arrays. It is similar to declaring single dimensional arrays. We first write the data type, then array name, and then size of the array. So because we are saying these are multidimensional arrays, when we have two different sizes, those are two dimensional arrays. If we have three sizes, then those will be called as three dimensional array and so on. So technically you can declare arrays with n number of dimensions. In this example, I have declared an array, named it as myvar and it is of type integer. It is three dimensional array. So total number of variables that this array can store is one multiplied by two multiplied by three, which will be six. In this another example, I have declared an integer array with dimension as 2 and 3. So total data size will be 2 multiplied by 3 that is 6. The better way to visualize two dimensional array is like this. In this table these are your rows and these are your columns. So in array declaration 2 is your row and 3 is your column. So array of 2 and 3 is basically is 2 rows and 3 columns. If you declare an array of let's say int foo 5 and 3 then we are declaring 5 rows and 3 columns. So these are 5 rows and these are 3 columns. Each element is indexed like this. So 0th row and 0th column, 0th row, 1st column, 0th row, 2nd column, 1st row, 0th column, 1st row, 1st column, 1st row, 2nd column. Similarly, in this case, it would be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, then next row is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, then 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0, 3, 1, 3, 2, and finally 4, 0, 4, 1, 4, 2. Important point to recollect here is that always index starts from 0. Let us take one more example. In example 2, we are declaring a character array. It's a two-dimensional array. For simpler understanding, we are initializing the variables like this. So this is my first row and this is the second row. Also notice in this case, I have not specified any size. So this is an unsized array. However, the second parameter is compulsory. So you need to at least specify data size of your second size. Now, why this is optional? Because as we have initialized the array, so total data size is 10. Just by counting, you can identify that. So total elements that we have specified over is 10. So 10 divided by 5, you get 2. So the compiler will automatically understand that this array is of size 2 and 5. Now let us take this third example. When you specify both the size elements, this is called a sized array. In this example, I have initialized this array by specifying values. So again, these are my rows and these individual elements are my columns. You can also initialize arrays like this. Compiler will not throw an error but it will obviously give you a warning. However, it is always better to initialize your array elements like this. So for you, visualizing values becomes easy. Now let us finally look into how we can access values that are stored into arrays. So here I'm just printing an integer and I'm specifying the value location. So when I say 2, 1, so 2, 1 is this part. So whatever the value which is stored at this array location will be displayed over here. Similarly, if you want to store value at a certain array location, then you can use scanf statement as regular and then specify address, variable name and the location where you want to store those values. So in this case, 3, 2, the value entered by user will be stored at this location, 3, 2. Similarly, you can assign values like this. So whatever the value that at the location of array 2, 3 will be stored into variable B. So this was all about multidimensional arrays. In the next lecture, we'll check few programs on multidimensional arrays.